years would not be enough for us to actually express and explain all that he did for us. And if God loves us so much, there is something he wants us to do. Love him back. Give our hearts to him and make him our friend. Hallelujah. Oh, 
put our hands together for the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend Jesus is to us. Without him, we would not be here this morning. Without him, we would not be alive today. Let's bless the name of Jesus. Let's glorify the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. Hallelujah. There's a song we used to sing. I don't know if we still sing them now, but I'm going to try to sing it. It says, oh, that day, I remember that day. I will never forget that day when Jesus washed my sins away. Let's sing it together. Oh, that day, I will be. washed my sins away when Jesus washed my sins away oh that day oh, oh that, that day I remember that, that day I will never forget that day, that day. when Jesus washed Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you this morning with a heart of gratitude. We come celebrating the miracle of the new birth. We come thanking you for that transformation. The great work of grace you bestowed upon our lives when we were on our way to total destruction. You stopped us halfway and you gave us a brand new direction. We thank you this morning because you are good. You are indeed very good. And there is no other friend that can be compared to you. We come this morning, oh God, to celebrate friendship. We come this morning to say that no other friend can do us like you. So we celebrate you today and we magnify you. Bless this service and cause your glory to fill this place. Thank you for releasing the Holy Spirit and the angels of the Lord that are here to minister to us. Father, we thank you and we celebrate you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please go around, shake hands with two or three people and tell them Jesus is my best friend. And please, as you say it, mean it with all your heart. It's not coming up. And then you can have your seat. God bless you. Let me take this opportunity to specially thank our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Olawodola. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity to minister on this pulpit. It's always an honor. And I do not take it for granted. And thank you, Mama, for your prayers and for all the encouragement you have given to us, my wife and I. The message that the Lord has laid in my heart, and I can tell you I really struggle with this one, is the pathway to friendship with God. 
the pathway to friendship with God. Uh, our technical people are not ready yet, but I have, to, I have to move on because time is not going to wait for me. And our text is taken from Romans chapter 12, from verse 1 to 2. Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Other vision says, your spiritual worship. Verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Can somebody say amen? Now notice that this epistle of Paul was written to the church in Rome. And in this particular chapter, chapter 12 that we've just read, the first two verses, you will notice that Paul was addressing this letter to the brethren. Because he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren. And when he used the word brethren, he was talking about people that have come to faith in Jesus Christ. Have you come to faith in Jesus Christ? Yes, I know that in our country today, it's fashionable to be a Christian. But have you come to faith with, in Jesus Christ? Have you connected with him? Is there a day in your life you can truly sing that song? Oh, that day. I remember that day. I will never forget that day when Jesus washed my sins away. So Paul was writing to the brethren. And he was saying to them that something needed to be done so that they would be able to know the will of God. They would be able to know the acceptable, the, the, the good, the acceptable and perfect will of God. Each one of us here would like to know the will of God because when you know the will of God, you can walk with confidence. When you know the will of God, you'll be able to accomplish the purpose for which he sent you on the earth. But these people were brethren. Why did Paul therefore ask them to present their bodies a living sacrifice? Why did he ask them to renew their minds? It is because man is trapezoid. That is to say that you are a tree. person that is born again, a person that has sung that song, oh, that day, I remember that day, I will never forget that day when Jesus washed my sins away. Fantastic. But there are things here that we need to do if we are going to be friends of God. Every person that you see on the surface of the earth was created by God. Is that correct? Is that correct? But not every person living on the earth can be called a child of God. There's a difference. But then among the children of God, not everyone can be called friends of God. And we want to find out just how can I be a part of that crowd called the friends of God. This is our month of, of friends of God as depicted in gospel according to John 15. And um, this month we have said that Greater love had no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus said, ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever, I do what? I command you. So there is a condition here. He says that if we do whatever he commands us, then we will be his friend. And one of the things that he commands us is what Paul wrote by the Holy Spirit in Romans chapter 12. Be not conformed to this world, verse 2, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I have checked it out that many of us know that Jesus has called us his friends. But the question is, are we truly his friends? What are the mark of friendship that exists between you and him? 
So we are going to look at some of this briefly now. Friendship doesn't just happen. It must be initiated and reciprocated. You cannot just get up in the morning one day and suddenly you are a friend to somebody and you are, you know, doing everything together, you know, enjoying yourself. It doesn't happen that way. It takes time. Somebody has to initiate the friendship. Another person has to respond to that friendship. And blessed be the name of the Lord. In our own case, we did not initiate it. He is the one that initiated it. It's God that initiated the friendship and he's calling us to reciprocate. And that's why we are here this morning. We want to know how can I be that element in his body that reciprocates the friendship he has initiated. Friendship is also a bilateral commitment with mutual rights and obligations. When you are friends with somebody, there are rights, there are obligations. There are things you have to do on behalf of that person or for that person and vice versa. There is a part that leads to friendship with God. This part we has steps and those are the things that we want to look at quickly before we pray. Number one, if you are going to be a friend of God, you must understand that God owns everything. When Abraham started his journey of friendship with God, that was one of the first things he learned. He learned to understand that God owned everything. Remember when he went to fight against those kings, um, uh, of, of, of uh, the, the, the five kings that came against him, and, and the Bible tells us that Abraham... Abraham told the king of Sodom when he returned with all the goods. The king of Sodom said to him, Abraham, take all the goods and give me all the men. And Abraham looked at him and said, no, I am not going to take the goods. So that you will not want to say, I made Abraham rich. He said, I have lifted my hands to the Lord God Almighty who owns everything. He knew that God was the owner of everything. You can see why it was easy for him when the time came to give up his only son. Having already known that everything he had belonged to God. So that's where we start from. Do you know that everything belongs to God? Do you know that you yourself, you belong to God? That he owns you? We are the sheep of his pasture. He is he that made us, not we ourselves. And so we need to understand that. But this ownership is one of the reasons that allowed us to understand why we needed to give our life to Jesus in the first place. Why we had to have relationship with God by the blood of Jesus. This relationship, we can call it by whatever name you want. Born again. As somebody who has given his life to the Lord Jesus. Who has surrendered his life. Who has yielded his life. Somebody who has allowed the Lord to rule his life. Or whatever title you want to give to it. But it is simply this. That the man who was cut off from God by wicked works is now reconciled. The man who sinned against God, whose spirit was antagonistic to God, has now been reconciled to God. And this is a miracle. Because it is God that is birthing us in Christ Jesus afresh. That is why it's called regeneration. God gives those who believe in him through Jesus a new set of genes. They have a DNA that is divinely configured. And by that divine DNA, they partake in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Can somebody say amen? So, all of us who sang that song this morning, oh, that day, I remember that day. You have a relationship with God. And the scripture says in first, uh, in Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is what? He is what? All things are past there. Behold, all things are become. Please, let's tell ourselves the truth. How many of us here have been born again for at least five months? Five months. At least five months. Thank you. 
Now let me ask you a question. Has everything passed away? Has everything in your life passed away? Okay, you didn't answer that one. Okay, the next one. Has everything become new? Everything has become new. Very good. At what level are you experiencing the newness? Is it in your physical body? You used to be very short, now you are tall. You used to be very dark in complexion, now you are fair. You used to speak um, one kind of language coming from one kind of village, but now you speak very nice French. What has become new? You say all things have become new. What has become new, dearly beloved? They are all found in your spirit. They are all found where? They are all found where? In your spirit. They are all found in your spirit even though your body is still the same body and your mind is still the same mind. So in your spirit, you are born again. You have the nature of God. But why are you not a friend of God? Because the spirit is willing and the flesh is. Now I want to illustrate to you what is going on here. God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in, in truth. And the scripture says that he created us in his own image. I don't imagine that God is my size. That would be terrible. Can't imagine that God is so big, right? So it is not in the dimension of who He is that we can say we were created in His image at all. It is in the spirit you carry the very spirit of God inside you. But then, why are we not able to do the things He has commanded us? Because those things that are in our spirit cannot manifest themselves in the flesh until it passes through a zone that is called the mind. And that's why Paul emphasized on the need to renew the mind. He said if you don't renew the mind, you will never be transformed. Amen. Let's leave that one there. Now let's go to other aspects. After you have a relationship with God, the next thing is you learn to fellowship with him. You fellowship with God. You spend time with God. Let me tell you, you cannot be a friend to somebody and you don't communicate. It's not possible. You fellowship. Sometimes you can be calling yourself in the middle of the night. And if there is any problem, you begin to pray. Sleep will just... I mean vanished from your eyes because friendship requires that we fellowship but it's not just mere fellowship it's not just coming together like we do this morning the reason for the fellowship is to lead us into intimacy now let me use another illustration Genesis chapter 2 Genesis chapter 2 the Holy Spirit just quickened me to read that scripture now and I want to read it um, quickly before we move on. Genesis chapter 2. Look at verse 24. It says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be what? And they shall be what? And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Well, you know, you, we read this scripture virtually at all weddings I've attended. A man shall leave his father and his mother and will cleave to his wife and the two shall become what? On the day of the wedding, we tell them, now, you are now one flesh. You are now husband and wife. You are one flesh now. Is that really true? Because if they become one flesh at that point, they can never separate. And do they separate? Do people separate? Not in this church. But do people separate? The reason is because the one flesh is not automatic. The one flesh is a pathway 
that starts first by living and then cleaving. Now, the part of cleaving is where we always have trouble. The reason is because cleaving comes with a lot of pains. Cleaving comes with a lot of hardship. And for, just to make you understand this, um, in Nigeria, most of us who drive, who used to drive old cars before, not now, old cars before, uh, definitely you must have visited a vulcanizer before in your life. Have you ever visited a vulcanizer before? All right. Now, a vulcanizer who wants to fix your flat tire, what does he do? He takes the tube on the inside and um, one day I watched a vulcanizer do this. I, I told him, he said, please don't spoil my tube. And he said, sir, I'm not spoiling it. I said, why are you, why are you scraping it like that with force? You're going to tear it. He said, if I don't do it, the two will not stay together. The stage of cleaving is the stage at which God uses his, his, his file to scrape all those, all those outside things that do not allow you to cleave. And that's the point where many people separate. That's the point they said, we are no more incompatible. I don't love you anymore. I don't even know who, 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 who bewitched me to marry you. You are going through a stage at which all the things that will hinder you from connecting with this woman forever is taking place. I met a man in America at the, at the restaurant we went to eat because one of our daughters was graduating. And he came to the restaurant to eat. So I asked him, sir, um, he, do you have a daughter here? He said, no, it's my granddaughter that is graduating. So I said, wow, that's interesting. He said, sir, by the way, for how long have you been married? He said, 50 years. I said, 50 years? And he said to me, he said, young man, let me tell you something. It was after 25 years, I discovered I was in love with my wife. I said, what? You mean you waited 25 years to know that? But when I left that man, I began to reflect on it. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he's right. When we say, you become one flesh, it takes virtually a lifetime to become one flesh. We're talking about intimacy. We're talking about people who begin to think alike and sometimes even look alike. Intimacy. And if we don't have intimacy, we can never be friends. We can never be friends. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? Now, let me take you to other aspect. Why must you renew your mind? Why must you renew your mind? Examples abound in scripture of betrayers, disloyalty, rebellion, sibling rivalry, etc. Among people of faith. We saw in the Bible how a brother killed a brother. And so on and so forth. Why does God call us his friends, even though we live as enemies of his, by wicked thoughts? Well, you know, God calls the things that be not as though they were. You know that? He declares a thing that has not yet appeared, as if they were already there. So when Jesus called them friends, listen, some of them betrayed him, some denied him. Is that not correct? He called them friends, but Judas still sold him. For 30 pieces of silver. How did Jesus' friend Judas Iscariot become a traitor? How did Satan successfully fill the minds of Ananias and Sapphira with deception in Acts chapter 5? Who made a person of wickedness out of a disciple like Simon in Acts chapter 8? These people were born again, but something happened to them. The unrenewed mind is the mind of the flesh. It is an enemy of God. When you are born again in the spirit, you are a brand new man on the inside, but your mind remains unrenewed. You are almost like a person that has never known Jesus. That's why we find in the church, among Christians, those who dupe others. No, not here, not here. In the church next door. Not here. We find people who lie to one another. We find people who steal. We find couples who fight. They do Mike Tyson. In their bedroom. 
But after they are finished, they are magnetizing, they speak in tongues. Shanda, da, 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 da. Listen to me. You must renew your mind. And as long as it takes you to do it, so long will it take you to get into intimacy with God. And that we heard last Sunday, it was Reverend Adiolu that preached, and he was talking about how God helps his friends. Now, if you are a friend of God, God will help you, definitely. You will not be stranded in life. When a senior pastor says he does not struggle, you think, you think it's because he came here with a non-struggling spoon in his mouth? It's because he decides to be a friend of God. I know this man. Not yesterday. I didn't say he has no struggles. Ah, he got many. But when it comes to the mind of God or mind towards God, that's what you need to make it in life. Because when you become God's friend, God will defend you anywhere. Look at the man like Abraham. He lied. He's my sister. So Pharaoh grabbed Sarah, put in his uh, among his covens and all the things he did. And God went there and said to him in the night, he said, you are a dead man. That woman in your house is somebody's wife. Hey, but the man said, his, his sister, ah, it doesn't matter. Restore her now. Why can't God do that for you? When somebody is trying to take what belongs to you. Why can't God rise and fight for you? Why must we always fight for ourselves? Where is our friend? Everything we need in life, we must fast and pray to get it. Where is the friendship? And Abraham received his wife. And I'm sure in his heart he was saying, yes, I knew God would do this for me. He's my friend. He's my friend. Your mind must be renewed. In fact, the Bible says that an unrenewed mind cannot and does not obey God. It doesn't. He may want to, but he cannot. An unrenewed mind attracts other unrenewed minds. Oh, there are very many, wherever you turn. In politics, oh, they are bound. In church, they are there. Unrenewed minds will always look for other unrenewed minds. And they will connect. And when unrenewed minds connect, guess what? They begin to open the way for evil things to happen. They negate God's grace and power. And they create room for Satan to operate. Our minds will be renewed. What are the signs and symptoms of the unrenewed mind? Fear is number one. And when I say fear, I'm not just talking about, I'm not talking about the fear of God. I'm not talking about you referencing God. I'm talking about the morbid fear that makes you not want to approach God. The fear that makes you not be transparent before God. That fear that makes you to withhold your friendship from God. You don't want him to know you intimately. Some people come before God in a time of prayer. They don't even tell God the actual thing they had in mind. And yet God knows what you have in mind. So we need to throw away fear. Fear of tomorrow. Fear of tomorrow. Fear of what will happen to me. My children. My wife. My husband. My job. We must throw away this fear. And the Lord will help us in Jesus name. Number two. Lack of inward discipline. An unrenewed mind does not have inward discipline. Oh, we can say tomorrow, I'm going to wake up very early in the morning. I'm going to pray. I'm going to just spend time here before God. <laughs> as soon as tomorrow comes, a little thing crops in, he will change it totally. His mind is not focused. His mind is not fixed. His mind wavers around from, from one thing to the other. He's not stable. James chapter 1, I think verse 7, verses 7 and 8. He says that the man who has double mind is unstable in all his ways. And that man cannot receive anything from the Lord. 
So if you want to receive any good thing from the Lord, then your mind must not be an unrenewed mind. Number three, inability to believe God. Oh yeah, even when we pray, even when we read the scriptures, when your mind is not stayed on the Lord, it will be very hard for you to truly believe. Inferiority complex. When they ask you to do something, you always feel you cannot do it. Even though you have the capacity, but you don't feel you can do it. And many people here in this church, despite all the deposit God has made in them, they run away from serving. They run away from serving because their minds have not been renewed. They are, they are, they are, they are focusing upon themselves and upon, upon their being perfect. No, 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 you can't, you can't be perfect in your services when you are just starting off. You've got to learn to make mistakes and move on. But God needs what you have to move this church forward. Can somebody say amen? I say God needs what you have to move this church forward. Well, let me talk about this other one. Then I move, I jump. Guilt and condemnation. An unredeemed mind is a mind that is focused on guilt. In fact, Satan likes this kind of mind. He will always come with condemnation, guilt. He will show you the things you did even before you met Jesus. And will tell you that that thing is still being counted against you. He knows you don't know you are right. And you begin to shake and you begin to confess it again. Lord, I, I confess my sin. And God said, which thing again are you confessing? When he says he will remove your sins and throw them away from him as the east is from the west. When God forgives, he forgives. And for those of you that have been forgiven, you are forgiven. I say you are forgiven. I say you are forgiven. So why do you continue to allow yourself to be condemned? Because something in your mind is just not adding up. You are not connecting with God and his word. Narrow-mindedness is another symptom of an unrenewed mind. A narrow-minded person is a person who does not have room for any other idea that is not his own. He doesn't have time for any other thing that does not originate from him. So he is closed up in his mind. We can talk about many other things. But let's just end it at that point. How do you renew your mind? Number one, do not conform to this world. I like this scripture in the Phillips translation. In the Phillips translation, it says, do not allow the world to squeeze you into its own mold. Don't let the world squeeze you into its own mold. The world has a mold, and every person that lives within it, is trying to force that person to conform to that mold. But we are saying in this church, we will not conform to the world. I say, we will not conform to the world. Thank you for the three amens. I say we will not conform to the world. Amen. Amen. Romans 12, 2, where we've just read, do not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We want to know the will of God. That's why we have to renew our minds. Because if we don't renew our minds, God will be speaking to us he will be speaking to our spirit man, but we cannot get it because our minds are not renewed. Let me tell you, for every step you have to make in your life, God has something to say about it. For every step you have to take in your life, God has something to say about it. And oftentimes, he has already said something about it, but we don't catch it. Whether you want to go into business, whether you want to go into any kind of profession, God will always lead his children. But are we listening? How can we listen when our minds have not been renewed? Second thing we need to do is to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. So our human mind has a function. And that function is to be a, 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 a gateway through which God's word can pass through to reach our physical body. So that the body can act on what the spirit is saying. And for that to take place, we must be renewed in the spirit of our mind. You and I must be renewed. Praise the Lord. And thirdly, you must learn to think differently. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1, When I was a child, 
He said, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Some of us thought that Paul was a matured Christian the day he met Jesus on his way to Damascus. No. He also had to learn to do what God is teaching us this morning. To renew his mind. I remember the first missionary journey when he went to Paphos in Cyprus. When, when, when Sergius Paulus, that, that palace, palace uh, witch, witch or wizard, wanted to stop him from preaching the gospel. He commanded blindness upon the man. The man became blind. But after that, how many times was Paul tortured, beaten with rods? And how many blind people did he make out of those people? Not one. What happened to him? The man has learned how to renew his mind. That this is not the war in which you fight an eye for an eye. We need to renew our minds. He said also to the Philippians, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The same mind that Jesus had, he said, let it be also in us. And in chapter 4 of Philippians, verse 8, he said, this scripture that I want to read, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. What does that really mean? It simply means that you must check the source of your information. Check the source of the thought you are thinking. Ask yourself, is it true? Even if it is true, is it necessary that I say it? Even if it is necessary for you to say it, is it my business to say it? And several other questions we need to ask. Because today, many believers are becoming Satan's agents to spread lies all over the world through social media and WhatsApp. Some of these informations have not been verified. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Let me bring this to a close because we have to pray. Paul said to the Colossians in chapter 3, Message Bible said, Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorb with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert. What is going on around? Around. Christ, that's where the action is. See things from that perspective. May that be our determination today. In the name of Jesus. Now, before I close, I just want to say one or two things. One. The idea of renewing your mind is not something you can hand over to somebody else to do for you. You are the one to do it. You use the word of God that we heard this morning. You pray, you speak, in, you speak in tongues, you pray in the spirit. But you make sure that you do what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6. When he said, take no thought saying. Jesus said, don't just accept any thought that comes to you. He knew that we as humans, particularly as Nigerians, we build tall fences around our houses to keep away the bad guys. But our minds, they are open to take anything that comes. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. I say, may the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I want us to stand. Let's stand. Let's rise on our feet. Let's rise on our feet. If you are here this morning and you have never given your life to Jesus, you can't become God's friend. There's no way God can do the things he did to Abraham for you until you decide to surrender your life to him. Every hand lifted up in this place. Every hand lifted. Every hand lifted. I'd like you to talk to God wherever you are and say, Lord, I want to be your friend. Lord, make me your friend. Help me to renew my mind. My mind is wandering. My mind is not focused. My mind is full of evil. My mind is full of confusion. Lord, help me in the name of Jesus to renew my mind. Help me to bring my mind under the foot of the cross. Help me to bring my mind, bring it captive to the law of God, to the word of God. I'd like you to pray for yourself. 
And as you pray for yourself, I want to give invitation for those who have not given their life to Jesus. You are right here this morning. You have never asked Jesus to come into your heart. You cannot sing that song. Oh, that day. I remember that day. I will never forget that day. Wherever you are, raise up your hand. I want to pray for you before I hand over this microphone. Just lift up your hand wherever you are. Ushers, please help us. Raise up your hand wherever you are. The ushers are coming to help you. Please, if you raise up your hand and you want to give your life to Jesus, you want me to pray for you, I'd like you to step out from where you are and come. Because we want to identify you and help you further this morning. Anybody who wants to give his life to Christ, we are still praying. Don't stop praying. Just keep praying. Just keep praying. Ask the Lord that this miracle will take place in your own heart, in your mind today. That you will not leave this place with an old mind. Please come. Please come. Any other? Please come. There's room at the cross for you. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. For millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. We are not going to wait for anyone who would like to join them, but if you want to do that immediately, just come now before I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for these two young people. We know that their commitment is genuine, for it has taken boldness for them to step out here. Let the miracle of salvation accompany them today. In the name of Jesus, there is joy in heaven when one single soul turns from sin and gives himself to the Lord. And this day, that salvation has come into your own house. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open your eyes and just follow the young man in bow tie. Let's put our hands together for them, please. Every hand lifted. Father, I pray this morning for your people. I ask that you will help us to renew our minds that we may truly be your friends. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.